arrête, arrête, arrête tous les femmes noires. Stop killing black women. Arrête tous les femmes noires. Please stop this bullshit. And black women of Louisiana, y'all gonna have to fight back, protect yourselves, gear up, and stop letting these dudes take y'all out. South, in the span of just six weeks, nine black women have been murdered in New Orleans. 33-year-old Sully Simmons was shot and killed while her one-year-old son watched. Now, her death came just hours after visiting her sister's grave. And ironically, her sister also died from gun violence. Asia Davis's body was found on a service road near I-10. Police arrested her boyfriend in connection to her murder. And Southern University College student Amani Williams was out celebrating her 20th birthday when she was shot multiple times. And Jadiamond Jones was just days away from graduation when she was also killed. Now, we should note that none of these cases are relate, related rather to one another, but they do all point to a very disturbing trend of violence against black women who so often go unprotected by society. Joining me now to help bring some attention to these cases are Missy Wilkinson and Gabriella Killett. They're staff writers for the New Orleans Advocate. Ladies, thank you both for joining me. Uh, Gabriella, I will start with you. Now, in your reporting, you said that in 2022, a woman was killed in New Orleans every 10 days. Now it's every two days. Uh, so an uptick of an already disturbing trend. Both are alarming. What uh, has your reporting determined is behind the spike in violence? Thank you, Ebony, for having us. And it's so unfortunate that it's on this topic. Um, what I would say is behind the spike in violence and what experts are telling us is that there is a unfortunate targeting of women in the city of as domestic violence killings on the rise. I had an expert tell me um, that after the pandemic, there have been tensions on the rise and just an unfortunate uptick in violence based on that. Um, unfortunately, New Orleans has seen murdered women um, consistently since the 80s. And it's not an uptick as much as it is an unfortunate concentrated period of time. Um, and that's what I would say about this. Wow, very sad. And I'm, I'm just taking a moment. I actually lived uh, in New Orleans um, for three years during Hurricane Katrina. I went to uh, Loyola there for law school. And what you're saying is exactly right. Um, it, it's a really, really concentrated uh, vulnerability of black women in particular in the city. Missy, uh, we, we talked a little bit about domestic violence. Can you speak a little bit about how domestic violence um, intersects with some of these murders? Sure. Um, so we've had nine separate individuals murdered and at least three of those have been murdered in domestic violence incidents that escalated and police have made arrests in three of those killings um but pretty much it intersects with what gabby was saying which is that we are seeing an increasing number of women targeted in um, retaliatory murders or maybe sometimes people can't get to their partners so they're shooting their their lovers um but intersecting with that are domestic incidents as well and um, we were just seeing an increase in that since the pandemic, basically. A lot of people who had been in close proximity with their captors due to the quarantine and the stay at home measures were faced with pretty unimaginable violence at that time. And the disruption continues according to domestic violence advocates. And um, unfortunately, that's that what we, is what we saw during the six week period. Yeah, and we know that when uh, a victim of domestic violence decides to leave that environment, that is often the most dangerous time uh, for that individual. Now, Gabriella, many of these women uh, that have been murdered recently are also mothers. Uh, please talk about the, the, the trauma that the children left behind, including some of those, uh, you know, that are witnesses uh, to the violence uh, endured by their own mothers. Okay, so I want to say, because this really, like, bothers me, especially because these are my kindred and it's like I don't like how they're doing this report because they're making it so estranged from the black women and then when they speak about experts 
How are you going to be an expert on something that you're not? You can't be an expert on black women or domestic violence that deals with black women or anything with black women. If you want to speak to an expert, why don't you just talk to a black woman? That is the only expert on domestic violence when it comes to black women. We have been telling you for years, y'all ran Rosa up off um, YouTube. She's been doing, mar she did two years straight of marches to inform society about black femicide. And it's like anything else in this country. Black women are never given the respect, the consideration, or the protection they need until it becomes a national crisis. And it is heading towards that right now. So now you're going to start to see more people get involved with trying to make sure things are a bit safer and more reactive than ever before because when you this is american history right if you really look at a lot of things that happened to the black community and how things were just overwhelmingly taking the lives of black women doing black women in and it got to the point where the majority of the representatives in this country just dismissed it and ignored it because it wasn't important to them because it didn't affect them because their mamas are not black their wives are not black their daughters are not black they don't give a goddamn about what happens to black women and then even when you have half black women like the vice president she's an indian woman with a black father she's never concerned with the issues of black women or black people period she's too concerned with white people and going out of her way to prove to white america that she's never going to do anything to help with the conditions that affect black women. They actually have clips of her talking about how she would never ever do anything special for black people, but yet <laughs> she's done it for other groups of people. And this in lies the entire problem. But you know what happens to this country whenever it just keeps letting the blatant disregard for the slaughter of black women and children just like the the great feminine d divine they suffer and they will continue to suffer in ways you ways that are unimaginable because by killing us you kill your country's largest natural resource and what will happen is that society will continue to spiral out of control until it's no longer safe for white people to walk outside or anyone else. So keep allowing them to kill black women and little girls, you know, because your hate for us is just that thick. And you think that, eh, to hell with them, they're just black people. You're going to see that the universe doesn't agree with you and you are allowing horrible things to begin to be put in motion. Children. I've spoken to a number of families where children are impacted by the loss of their mothers and having their mothers in many cases killed in front of them. It's just horrific. Um, I would speak to mainly the fact that the family is really rallying around these children and hoping so desperately to lift them up as they experience this tragedy. Unfortunately, in one case, in the children of Keisha Gray, um, who was killed in a domestic violence uh, killing, her three children were staying at their paternal grandmother's house and it burned down. Um, and it's just horrific to see resources being stripped away from these children in a variety of ways. We saw Misha Anderson, six month old, in the back seat of her car. Police initially thought that he had been grazed by a bullet, but he was covered in, in Misha's blood. And her last words were, get my baby to the child's father. So unfortunately, you know, the resources aren't immediately available as far as what I have found, but we are seeing families really rally around these children in hopes of, of caring for them. 
I mean, it just couldn't be more devastating. But Missy and Gabriella, there's more I want to unpack with you both, so stay with me. And after the break, we'll ask what's being done to address the violence against black women in New Orleans. Black women. These killings of our black women that leave a lot of our young black children stranded and more destitute than when their moms were alive is why we as black women seriously have to stop with the self-hate come together really understand that you need to have unity and a strong sisterhood to help out where those fallen sisters who are no longer here today For those black women that are no longer here today to do the best you can to, to help make up for their, their absence. If you see children in your community that need guidance, they need food, they need shelter, they need assistance, they need shelter from the storm, they need protection from violence, do your part. Call the police. If you live in an area where you have the right to carry, please get your vests. Get the bullet shields that can go in your car so that if these people let off, on, let off rounds on you, you have an additional barrier to help you survive the attack. Get things that help fortify your home. You can buy bulletproof glass. You can buy reinforced doors. You can put metals in your home that will absorb bullets so that when you're in, in your home, you can make it like a fortress. You have to start doing the impossible to try to stop letting the possibility of ending unnecessary lives of black women and children to stop. This is why it is so important for black women to center themselves and to stop being involved in conversations about relationships, marriage, swindling men out of their money, worrying about who they date and why they don't date you. You must stop this. It only takes black women one entire generation to get rid of these problematic black males that are killing up all of the black women and children. If you stay away from them, do not have children with them, isolate yourself from them, protect yourself from them, protect your children from them, they will die out. They will grow old, they will get sick, they will die. They will get out of here. And all that aggression that they have plague in our communities and encouraging in our communities will decrease. Black women, you have the power to change this and stop all of this death right now. Get rid of the black male. And that feeling in you where you have a need for this thing in your life. I don't care how much it takes. Do whatever you got to do to fortify your home. Fortify, fortify your car when you drive. Get your licensed and state approved weapons. Carry them. Get your body armor. Get things to protect your children. Stop being vulnerable. If you don't have to go to public places where a lot of this nonsense and violence takes place, do not go. Everybody just can't get up and move out of their neighborhoods, but try to be anywhere you can that is more safe than what you are right now. Rally together, make phone calls, do email bombs, do whatever you have to do to your representatives so that they know they have got to beef up patrol. 
They have to even call the National Guard in, if need be, okay, to get these communities under control. No black women should be in fear of death 24 hours a day. And that's really what it is. There was a report done out of Chicago a week or two ago about how black women are surrounded by crime and attacks every moment of the day. That is a, a serious amount of stress to live under. It is a serious amount of domestic terrorism to have to endure. Please, please, please do your part in protecting yourself and eliminating as much risk as possible for you and your loved ones. Before the break, we were discussing the recent murders of black women in New Orleans. Nine black women have been murdered within a six week time period in New Orleans. And even though none of these deaths are connected to one another, all of these women died tragically, leaving behind grieving family and friends. Of the nine victims, five of them are under the age of 30. And in 2022, New Orleans was the murder capital of America when looking at the numbers of murders per population. And the uptick in number in black women dying there has a spotlight on this southern city. Still with me, Missy Wilkerson and Gabriella Killett. They are both staff writers for the New Orleans Advocate, and they've been covering these murders over the last several weeks. Uh, Gabriella, I, I know that most of these cases remain unsolved. What are some of the obstacles that law enforcement is expressing in terms of uh, getting some uh, resolution here? What I, what sources have told me and what I've found to be true is that people are really terrified as witnesses to speak up about these cases. Um, targeted killings are higher than ever in the city of New Orleans and unfortunately with neighborhood gangs patrolling the streets and as gang experts have told us in the past, um, you know, organized crime is horrifically violent and the targetings in particular are really, really horrific. And considering that people are scared to talk, I think it's a bit of that. I think it's um, also just trying to piece everything together. We also have an unfortunately staff, understaffed, excuse me, um, police force, and that leaves a backlog in tracking evidence, um, in allowing detectives to be available to cover these cases and, and solve them and bring hopefully family members to justice. Yeah. Now, Missy, uh, as terrifying and uh, devastating as these numbers are, the reality is that the gun violence statistically is down compared to last year. So are there strategies that are proving to be working and effective and what more needs to be done? You know, it's kind of too soon to see with a lot of the strategies that we're deploying, um, but it is encouraging to see this nationwide downtick in, in gun violence. Um, at this rate, New Orleans is projected to have about 240 and 250 homicides for 2023, which is still a staggeringly high number for a city of our size. Um, with regards to some of these domestic shootings in particular, um, our city officials are wanting to direct more resources towards families, um, towards survivors. The New Orleans Family and Justice Center um, just, you know, wants to do more intervention with regard to trauma. Our local hospitals have recently launched a arm of 911 that has a mental health capacity. Um, so they'll you know, send social workers and stuff to connect survivors with resources. And our district attorney is hoping to increase the number of Gwen's Law hearings. Uh, Gwen's Law basically dictates that in instances of domestic violence, um, a suspect can be held without bond um, for a few days that can function as a cooling off period. Um, because in the past we've seen people bond out and then go ahead and enact the violence they originally were incarcerated for. So those are a few things that we're, we're hoping will turn the tide. Yeah, those are some, some good policies. Uh, Gabrielle, I want to ask you this. I would be remiss to not mention as we discuss these um, horrific murders of black women in New Orleans that New Orleans does have a black woman as its mayor, uh, Latoya Cantrell. And I'm curious around kind of the, the local politics of the matter. Is the mayor uh, speaking about this? I, I just heard some policies that are in place. Um, what is the political leadership doing around it? So shortly after the killing of uh, Jadiman Jones and Amani Williams outside of a hookah bar um, as Amani was celebrating her 
20th birthday, uh, Latoya Cantrell, our mayor of New Orleans, um, did host a press conference in which she made a comment that many families um, who have been victimized by gun violence, specifically in these nine cases, um, found incredibly offensive. Um, and she, she did say publicly that women who were being targeted in these cases um, were involved in the crimes and that they weren't random, um, that women somehow were implicated in criminal activity. Um, she did come back and apologize uh, because so many victims' families were hurt uh, just because they had the understanding that their loved ones were innocent and at the wrong place at the wrong time and speaking in a generalization was uh, harmful for them. Um, so, you know, uh, Mayor Cantrell did come out and say that immediately after. Um, since then, she did apologize. Um, she is an advocate for our police force. And we also have a black woman as the interim superintendent of the New Orleans Police Department. So they are hopefully now rallying together to hopefully solve these crimes and continue to keep our numbers down. Yeah, that sounds like a shift in accountability um, from my perspective, but um, glad to hear that she did apologize. Also worth noting that thousands of black women are going to be matriculating uh, to New Orleans coming up soon for the Essence Festival yeah, on the 4th of yeah. July weekend. And it's so important that um, they be safe and protected during their travels. Missy Wilkerson and Gabriella Killett, thank you both so much for your reporting and for joining us. We will follow these cases. Black women, I'm telling you, you're going to really have to get to the point where you find the strength within you to free yourself from these relationships with these very black males that are taking the lives of black women and little girls and trafficking our little girls every day. You can clearly see that we will not get any help from this government the way that we need to because we are black women and no one cares about if we get killed or that these guys keep continuing to kill us every four to five hours of the day so we have to put the gauntlet down and realize that we are the only ones who have to care and who are the only ones that can and should get up and start doing something about it wherever you live regardless of the possibility of going to prison or whatever if anybody comes into your home or to you to try to take your life do everything in your power to take theirs first especially if you live in a place like louisiana when you where you can carry a firearm you should not only carry a firearm but you should have all types of tactical gear clothing so that <laughs> bullets can not do as much damage to you if you didn't have it at all and you should be very aware of your situation and try to do all that you can to protect yourself and yours in a situation where things are so deadly stacked against you it is the true ignorance of self-hate in the black community that is allowing all of this to go on but black women you got a job to do you have to stand up and do everything in your power to protect yourself and your children if you have them